Here are 10 great British TV shows that you can watch to improve your English. Watching TV shows is a great way to learn English because we get exposure to new and very interesting vocabulary, we get to hear different accents, and we also get a great opportunity for listening practice. And I think it's really important that you guys get exposed to modern English, the kinds of English that you're going to hear if you come visit Britain. All right, let's get straight to number one. Number one, The Great British Bake Off. This is a competition in which every week contestants have baking challenges and they're judged on the quality of the food that they make. It's fun, it's light-hearted and it's very funny. Three reasons that it's a great program for you guys to learn English. First of all, you have a variety of accents from all around Britain. So that's really interesting to see how people speak in different parts of Britain. It's a very contemporary show, which means that all the contestants and all the people in the show are using modern English. And because it's a competition, they're using very natural English because they're reacting to things and they're giving opinions and they're saying and they're talking about their feelings. And it's all very natural. So you're going to be exposed to phrases and vocabulary and utterances that are very natural. It's also quite an interesting insight into British culture, um, the kinds of foods that are popular in Britain, um, and also just the, where people are from. So you'll get to know um, people from different parts of Britain, which I think is, is interesting. All right, the next one is Black Mirror. Now this is a science fiction TV series that looks at modern society and how technology is used. And it's pretty dark, but it's also really exciting. So this is maybe not one for kids. Uh, this is um, probably quite an adult TV series, but it's really good. Um, now, the reasons why I think it's great for learning English, well, because it's so well written, there's some fantastic conversations and dialogues that I think are really uh, worth listening to. I also think that it's a really thought-provoking uh, TV series that makes you think about topics to do with uh, technology and, um, and the future. And with that, there's lots of interesting topic vocabulary. So. Uh, vocabulary related to social media and to technology, you're going to hear a lot of that. So if that's something you're interested in, then this is the perfect TV series. Now because each episode is totally different, you're going to get exposed to a variety of accents as well. So that's again a really big bonus is the variety of um, different types of English that you're going to hear. Another cooking program, but this one is different. This is Jamie Oliver. Now Jamie Oliver is an internationally known British chef who is hugely popular around the world. Now the reason I think it's great for you guys is, uh, well, a couple of things. He speaks really informally. His English is very informal. So you're gonna be exposed to a lot of British slang phrases. Now he's from Essex, which is a county to the east of London. And his pronunciation reflects that. So for example, he'll, he won't pronounce some T's in the middle of words. For example, he'll say water instead of water which I also sometimes do. So you're gonna hear that kind of pronunciation, which I think is fascinating. You'll also get great amount of food vocabulary. Uh, you'll get interesting verbs. Um, he also um, ha uses really interesting adjectives to describe his food. So there's a variety of interesting English that um, you can hear when you're listening to Jamie Oliver. Also, you get to learn how to cook some of the most delicious foods, so that's kind of cool. Also, Jamie Oliver is a really good ambassador for Great Britain and British culture, so you're going to get a lot of that in his TV shows. This one is X Factor. Now, X Factor is the most popular singing competition, I think, on British TV. Now, why I think it's so good for learning English is a couple of things. First of all, for each contestant, they always go and tell their story about how they got to this competition. So where they came from, uh, what they used to do as a job, or what they still do as a job, um, and the story about how they came to X Factor. Now in these stories, you're gonna be hearing narrative tenses, lots of past tenses, past perfect, uh, past simple, and um, that's a really great way to kind of pick up on, on how to tell a story, um, how to bring emotion into your English as well. Now it is a very emotional TV program and you're gonna hear lots of natural exchanges between the contestants and the judges. So again, lots of natural English, 
uh, opinion phrases, um, adjectives. Uh, so there's a lots of uh, really interesting English that you're going to hear. Um, also, it's a really good insight into British culture. So you're going to hear lots of British music. You'll obviously see the fashion of and the clothes of um, the contestants. And also you'll get, again, a variety of accents because the competition goes around Britain. So sometimes they're in Liverpool, sometimes they're in Birmingham, in London. So you're going to hear a variety of accents again. Plus, it's quite fun. It is quite a fun show. I, yeah, I think you might enjoy it. Now, just to remind you guys, you can find a lot of these shows on YouTube. Even if it's not the full episode, you'll get uh, clips. And I know for a fact that X Factor has its own YouTube channel, and there's loads of videos on there that you can watch and follow the show. So you don't need to watch the whole episode. You can just go on YouTube and check out their channel there. The world's most famous detective, Sherlock, played by Benedict Cumberbatch. This is a classic TV series, and I'm sure you're probably familiar with it. So what you've got is fantastic vocabulary and conversations that are really funny, so really playful with the, the language. You've also got it set in modern London, which is fantastic, so you get to see London. And also, again, a variety of accents because there are different characters coming in. So yeah, again, variety of accents uh, that you're going to be exposed to. Plus, it's extremely thrilling. So you're going to want to watch not just one episode, but another one and another one and another one. We call this binge watching. If you just keep watching uh, the same TV show, uh, just the next episode and then the next episode is to binge watch. So I'm going to predict that you will binge watch Sherlock once you start watching it. <laughs> Another competition, this time a dancing competition. Strictly Come Dancing. The reasons that I recommend this one is because A, it's really fun. I mean, it's just a fun show. If you love music and you love dancing, you'll love watching it. Secondly, once again, you've got natural reactions to the things that are happening in the show. So you'll be exposed to natural English once again. So whether that's the judges giving their opinions or the contestants saying how happy they are at um, doing this, doing the dance. Whatever the reaction is, you, you're going to hear it as being quite natural. Maybe they're going to stumble on their words. Maybe they don't think of the right words. Maybe you might even hear some grammatical mistakes, but that's, that's natural English. So that's why I think it's really great for you guys to watch uh, these kinds of reality TV shows because, um, yeah, you're going to hear really everyday English. Okay, this is the first comedy program that I'm recommending. Now, generally, I don't recommend watching comedy uh, in another language because comedy is a really cultural thing. And I think so much of what one culture finds funny, another one perhaps won't do. However, having said that, I think um, Peep Show is a really, it's a really good program for a number of reasons. First of all, it is funny. I think it is funny. And I think that humour can translate you know, um, to different cultures. The, the idea is that it's two um, men in their 30s that live together and they have very different personalities and it's their lives and how they interact with the world and they get into all kinds of adventures and mishaps and um, it's the relationships they have with other people and yeah, it's, it's a good program. Um, the English that you'll hear is pretty clear. I mean, they're very clear in the way that they speak. So. That's really good. I think you'll be able to understand them pretty well. The vocabulary that they use, it's contemporary, it's modern English. Now it can be a little bit rude, so you want to be careful if you're watching it with children, you maybe want to think about that. But yeah, it's very clear English and uh, it's very modern contemporary English as well. And I think it's quite funny. Maybe you disagree with me, I don't know. Check it out. Um, it's on YouTube, it's on Netflix, um, it's from Channel 4, so yeah, check it out, see what you think. It also kind of shows the boring side of living in London. They live in a London suburb and their lives are pretty boring, so it's kind of interesting to see that side of Britain as well. Britain and London isn't just Big Ben and you know Tower Bridge, it could be boring suburban lives as well. <laughs> The complete opposite to Peep Show is Downton Abbey. Downton Abbey is hugely popular around the world. I'm sure you have seen it or probably heard of it at least. So Downton Abbey is set in the early 1900s. It's, it's a historical drama. So it's the life of this aristocratic family in their home 
and then it's kind of compared, so you have the aristocratic family, the very rich family living upstairs, and then the servants living downstairs. So you have these two different worlds and how they interact. Um, it's obviously not contemporary English, um, so in that respect, some of the vocabulary and the way that they speak maybe isn't how we speak now. However, it is a really interesting show and you're gonna get lots of interesting dialogue, conversations, and again, a variety of accents you'll hear as well. So I think it's worth watching and certainly it's a very popular TV program. So even if you just watch it because you, you love it more than anything else, then that's perfect. This one is a personal favorite of mine, Planet Earth. Now, specifically, I want to talk about the narrator of Planet Earth, David Attenborough, or sorry, Sir David Attenborough. Now, he is considered in Britain to be a national treasure. He is someone that everybody respects and everybody loves. I've been listening to his voice ever since I was a child. He narrates, every, well, he has narrated every wildlife program I've ever listened to. And his voice is so comforting and soothing. It's, it's like a, the grandfather that you never had. Now, Planet Earth is, I think, one of the greatest TV programs of all time. And it looks at different aspects of the world and the nature that lives in each one. So it could be the jungle, the desert, the seas. And David Attenborough, sorry, Sir David Attenborough narrates uh, the stories of these places just absolutely beautifully. His vocabulary is incredible. The way he delivers his sentences are so clear and it's with such uh, grace and charm about them that, yeah, it's worth watching Planet Earth just to listen to David Attenborough. Now, I think the vocabulary can be quite difficult sometimes, so subtitles are a really good idea. And you don't need to understand every word with, with this because I, he uses a lot of technical vocabulary to do with um, the animals and to do with wildlife. And I don't understand a lot of them, um, but that doesn't matter. It's not, that's not what we're doing. We're, we're matching some of the most incredible sort of cinematography with his voice and the way he speaks. And I think that's worth watching just in itself. And my final one. Now I've given you a variety of TV programs. We've had reality TV programs. We've had natural history programs. We've had comedy. This last one is a bit different. Um, but the programs, is two programs that I want to kind of talk about. Um, and you can choose which one you prefer. One is Made in Chelsea. And the other one is The Only Way is Essex. Now these are structured reality shows. So they are presented as being reality, but in they're not. Now, why I think these are really interesting for you guys to watch, a couple of reasons. First of all, you have Made in Chelsea, which is a group of young, beautiful, uh, rich uh, people in West London. And then with The Only Way is Essex, you have a group of young, good-looking people from Essex, which is, as I said before, to the east of London, and very different social groups. So that's a really interesting thing to begin with, is that you're gonna get an interesting insight into British culture and these different types of people. Also, you're gonna get really fascinating vocabulary. So the difference of vocabulary that they use, um, it's very modern, but it's uh, not something you're gonna find in your English language course book. So I think that's great to expose you to really fascinating vocabulary, phrases, idioms, slang, all that kind of stuff, it's gonna be there. You're also gonna get very different accents. So over in Chelsea, you're gonna get very posh, received pronunciation, um, you know, very, very, um, almost upper class accents. In Essex, in the only way is Essex, you're gonna get Essex accents, which is very different. Um, so the variety is fascinating to, to watch. So I think it's an interesting way to look at British culture and uh, the language as well in two very different shows. Now I'm gonna say now, I don't, I don't watch either of them, but I know that if I did start watching one of them, I might get a little bit addicted. So that's maybe why I don't watch it, so that I don't get addicted to them. All right, so those are 10 of the best British TV shows that you can watch to help you learn English. Now, of course, there are so many more. I've left out so many TV shows that you could watch. 
And of course I've left out all the American ones. There are some amazing American TV programs that I think would be fantastic to learn English. Obviously I've just focused on the British ones today because I teach British English, but I think I will try and do an American English one as well at some point because there's so much great TV to learn from. If you've enjoyed this video guys, please give it a big thumbs up, share it with anyone you know that is trying to learn English. If you're a student and you have an English teacher, if you could share it with them so that they can tell all their students, that would be fantastic. So please share it because I'd love to just spread the word and help as many people as possible to learn English. Thank you so much for watching guys. Remember, I've got new videos out every Tuesday and every Friday. Check them out, subscribe so you don't miss any of them. This is Tom, the Chief Dreamer, saying goodbye.